these certainly are in for a bit of a theme right now between this and Bottoms, and I like it. Sanctuary is a movie you might have heard me talk about before. It is one of my favorite movies out of 2022 that didn't come out until 2023, because I saw it last year at TIFF, talked it up there, talked about it in my best of 2022 videos, but now it's finally out. And I figured since I'm probably currently at TIFF while you're watching this, or maybe another film festival, that it would be the perfect time to release a dedicated video looking at Sanctuary. Real quick though, mom, dad, and other assorted family members, um, don't watch this one. I don't need you to see me talking about a pervy ass movie in a positive way. Cause yeah, this is, this is my ideal pervy movie. But I would probably describe this movie as demented rom-com. And yeah, I'm using rom-com very loosely. Like when I say that like Rye Lane is the best rom-com that like kind of feels cheap to call it a rom-com that's come out this year, I mean it. And it is still very firmly a rom-com. Where this on the other hand is technically a romantic comedy. Uh, it's just infused with some Fifty Shades of Grey, which honestly is a terrible comparison to make to it, but it really is just that like universally understood comparison for dummy stuff. So this movie will definitely not be for everyone. I'm sure a lot of people will actually keep it in that same category of your schlocky things like 365 and Fifty Shades. I'm sure a lot of people will find some of this very cringe and at times maybe. But I don't know what to tell you, friends. I had a blast with this damn movie. Yeah, there's a couple moments where the dialogue gets a little bit cringe, but I just love the spirit of it. Also, I'm cringe. Truly just a fantastic little movie for all the pervy weirdos out there. Now, obviously we are gonna go into some spoilers. I will let you know when we're going into like the conclusion or the ending. So if you wanna like, bop off and finish watching it uh, after you kind of get to a certain point here, you can, but you know, it's like, it's the kind of movie I don't really think you can spoil because it really is just the dynamic between these two people that is so interesting. Sanctuary starring Christopher Abbott and Margaret Qualley confines the heir to a hotel empire and his dominatrix to a hotel suite in a battle of mental turmoil as he's trying to end their long-standing arrangements. And while it is a full-on dominatrix scenario, there is no touching in these arrangements. The reason that I don't touch my clients is that what they need from me is not physical. It's mental. Though I will say, just because you don't see anything graphic, um, there is a lot of audio that makes it very clear what's happening, because just because she isn't touching him at times, he can touch himself. But Sanctuary is a movie that kind of plays out in these different stages. It starts with what seems like some kind of interview to see if he's fit to be CEO of a company, but it is a scripted scenario. And I mean a very scripted scenario. Everything from the mess ups to the stuff that seems like it's going off script is all there very intentionally to be part of the experience being crafted. And that experience obviously continues to ramp up until she has him on his knees cleaning the bathroom. How? Yes. When you think of yourself, what do you see? Is it something like garbage? And that scene, largely about someone being vetted for a CEO position, is a little bit of foreshadowing. Hal's dad here has recently passed away, so he's being transitioned into the CEO position of his father's hotel and resort empire. And because he's about to be in this highly respected position, he feels like it's time to end his long-standing dominatrix appointments with Rebecca. He wants to be seen as a winner and winners do not get dominated. Though I would probably argue the opposite. It is probably very common for people with exorbitant amount of money to pay exactly for this thing. Like I feel very confident that someone has Jeff Bezos on his hands and knees scrubbing a toilet with a toothbrush right now. But yeah, base expectation is that if you're some ultra rich CEO, you are paying for some kind of dom stuff. Remember kids, it wasn't normal that Christian Grey wasn't paying anybody for their services. He was cheap. Oh my god, I almost forgot we are wearing the prototype for Christian Grey right now. You know, at least Hal here leaves her off with a $30,000 watch, like talk about a severance package. And like most people being fired out of the blue, she doesn't exactly take it the best. Then I apologize. An apology? What am I supposed to do with that? But she is leaving until she sees a picture of Hal's family and the way he's looking at his dad, and it's so clear that he just wants to make him proud even now, to be the man his dad never believed he could be. To the point that he was stealing lines from his book. I need to match up my insides with my outsides. I match up my insides with my outsides. You read my dad's book, congratulations. The person who wins. I am a person who wins. You couldn't even fire me without stealing from him. So she starts to realize that the only reason Hal even has a chance at being able to effectively run this entire hotel empire is because of their time together. He went from this pathetic little guy unable to advocate for what he even wanted from a dominatrix to scripting out his own experience scenes. 
of a woman dominating him. I don't know what you guys are thinking, but that's growth. But he is very aware that his dad saw him as someone who loses. And that's how Rebecca's gonna get under his skin. It doesn't matter what my father thought. I can do this job. I know what it takes. I am, I am prepared. I believe you when you say that. And she's making good points. If his dad didn't believe in him, who's the one who gave him all this confidence? The one who made him think he had a chance at doing this job? You would be unfit if it were not for me. You don't even fucking know what happened. I taught you how to ask for what you want. You couldn't do that before you met me. So for the work she feels she's put into him, she wants half of his first year's salary as CEO four million dollars. You know, I probably would have just walked off with a $32,000 watch and pawned it, but I guess I'm not entrepreneurial. Your market cap is $185 million. What is $32,000 compared to what you have? And if he doesn't agree to the terms, she'll tell everyone what they've been doing. Even starts going through this lovely little laundry list of his kinks and the weird things he's made her do and say, knows that there'll be really big stories in the news because this is a transition of power. Heir to Hotel Fortune shoves cotton swab into own penis when commanded. And he's not really biting and being pretty nonchalant, thinking that it would just make him sound cool until... There's a camera hidden in this hotel suite and I have hours of footage. It's like you can feel his stomach fall out of his ass there, but there's still some playfulness in this moment. Like someone keeps calling and asking about floral arrangements, so she assumes that he'd been hiding some kind of girlfriend from her, but it's his mommy. And it's just this little smile she gives after he says that it's his mom. Oh, mom, all I'm saying is I just need a couple minutes and then we can talk about it. Because this is a secret rom-com, but we'll get there. Because with the revelation of the camera on the table, this transitions us into unhinged dancing while future CEO loses his gosh darn mind. Where is the fucking camera? If you wanna see it so bad, then fucking find it. And there is lots of fun camera work here. We have these like neat little pans, these fun mirror reflection shots as he's starting to trash the place. Just a super fun way to keep things pretty dynamic when we're just locked into this single location. And as we're just going through this, you'll notice that like any time he tries to get a one up on her, she just finds a way to flip it back on him. And even though he's clearly very stressed out, he's also like really into it. Like his little soldier standing at full attention. I guess that tracks. I mean, what the fuck is wrong with you? You love this. She loves it too, though, you can tell. Not that he's ever gonna admit it, he even goes like one step further and says that like anyone can do what she does. You mean nothing to me. Okay. What does that mean, okay? There's no video. And it felt like she was almost gonna leave until he said that, cause now she needs to prove that she is so special by getting him going with the Pledge of Allegiance. With liberty and justice <clears throat> for all. God, I love to see a professional at work. And then things start getting really wacky. Yeah, that's right, seducing someone with the Pledge of Allegiance wasn't the wacky part. To further prove that he is so dedicated to what she wants at all times, she basically just like starts straddling him with a knife to his neck. Just say to me that you don't care what I want and that it's not the most important thing to you. Say that and I'll stop. And he can't do it. So they do it. There goes the no touching arrangement just out the window. Yeah, this whole scene is just wild. Like there's this look in his eyes of like, you're insane, but I'm so into this. And then she starts talking about getting pregnant and that gets him off the most. So wacky. I'm sure there's so many people who probably dipped at this point, but uh, let me know if you make it through. I it's worth it in my opinion. And again, I just must point out there's this little smile on her face when he doesn't stop her because it's a romantic comedy, baby. Just a really fucked up one. It's like the opposite end of the stuff that people romanticize. Like everybody's all like, oh my God, Hardin Scott, Christian Grey, Massimo, all these men that are abusive and screaming, it's so good. This is like the opposite side that's all like, oh my God, she's threatening to take all of my money and expose me to the public. She's just so good. <laughs> and yeah, apparently it was so good that that's all it took for him to say, I'll pay it, half my salary for the first year and half my bonus. For a total of six million dollars. Bravo, all-star performance. She even starts telling him how to set up all the funds to avoid IRS scrutiny. He's gonna set up two corporations in the Caymans, one for you guys, one for me, you should be typing. The Caymans, that's a tax shelter, right? We love a business, bitch. But you may notice that she almost seems sad to be getting exactly what she wants. The music even flourishes downwards. 
But again, she leaves, gets in the elevator, which is like the only thing stopping this from being a 100% single location movie, but I'm still considering it a single location movie because before the elevator can actually go anywhere, he pops up and I was like, oh my God, is he, what, what's, what's going to happen? What's going on? But it's really just more that he's now concerned that there is nothing stopping her from coming back and doing this all over again. So he wants collateral, but the way he words it just pisses her off that you can do this again and again and again for years and then I have to see, um... To see me again. So now she's saying that the actual solution is for him to find something to keep her happy forever, like a job in the company with good salary and benefits. Would it be weird if we were co-CEOs? Yes. Has anybody done that? God, she's so unhinged, I love it. I feel like that says something about me that requires further reflection, but... That's for my therapist to deal with. Are you insane? Oh my God, I don't know what you're doing. All right, so right about now is probably where you might want to hop off if you don't want to know how it ends or you want to like watch the movie yourself to see how it ends. I'm just giving you a warning. We're just, we're just working into our conclusion here. This is a nice breezy little movie. Which brings us to the biggest mind fuck. After she's told us that there's no video, which made more sense, it really did seem like this kind of like Hail Mary play that wasn't true. Uh, turns out it was, she does have video. Obviously, the camera was in the bathroom. Why did you do this? You wouldn't believe me. Now, I will say, obviously, super not cool. Massive violation of trust. Like, this is exactly the type of thing that I'm sure he paid insanely good money to not have happen. And then for him, it goes just like one step further because this whole scenario is the only thing that feels like it's like, actually his. And obviously, he'd be super bothered if his mom and the board of the company knew what he was doing in his free time. The people I work with, my family, my mother, they, can, they just cannot see that video. Do not ruin my intolerable, pointless, life. Do you even know why you're doing this or is this just the game? Yes, I want to play this game. And this is when we get down to some truth, but she has kind of mentally beat him down so thoroughly that he's not going to see it as that. But like, obviously, six million dollars is more than enough for her to live on. She is smart. She'd make that last. There's no reason for her to keep doing this when she got exactly what she wanted. She wants to play the game. And not just the game with everyone, specifically with him. To the point that she's fired all of her other Dom clients because it felt disloyal to what they do. Even ended her relationship with this guy named Alexander, who we heard crying to her on the phone in the elevator earlier. Alexander. A a Alexander, I can't hear you. Because you're crying. Because this is a romantic comedy, baby, and sometimes it's just the weird swings of life that bring us together. I'm so sorry. I just, I can't stop. I love it. And as mentioned, Hal obviously thinks this is all bullshit. Why wouldn't he? She has just been mentally torturing him for hours, and now she's trying to pull this whole, like, no, I've let go of everything else in my life. I'm doing this because... I just love what we do together. That's what matters to me. Why do you think that I started taping the sessions? It was for me. Stop. So that I could have them. But you can see it in her eyes. It's so sincere. And that's why she was taping the sessions. It was for her fun time afterwards. Again, we're just not going to question the ethics of that too hard. Obviously, it's very unethical. It's not trying to present itself as ethical. It's unethical. I'm so tired. You're not going to mind fuck me like this. We fit Did you perfectly. hear me, sanctuary, sanctuary? I'm using the safe word sanctuary! Oh, right, I totally forgot that the title is their safe word. I love that. But because of everything that's been going on as expected, he is so completely exhausted and just is trying to flip control because he just can't believe what she's saying, won't believe what she's saying, and needs her to say that it's all a lie, that it's just like one other piece to the like, I'm fucking with you puzzle. To the point that he starts threatening a murder-suicide. <laughs> I will kill you, and then I'll kill myself. Which, hell man, come on, that's just dramatic. Like, I know this is rough, but like, come on, my guy. Just tell the truth. I am nothing. Okay, wait, is he now turning this into another Dom scenario? Because I think he likes being called nothing. And then somehow, it gets even wackier. She tells him she wants to play a game, like he literally has a knife in her face, and now she wants to try role-playing as his dad. I came back from the fucking dead to speak to you, so the least that you could do is say hello. Milf Manor, move aside, we got Heir to Dilf on the line. Oh, that would that would be a good show, Heir to the Dilf. Ooh, TLC, hit me up. I will say though, as weird as this gets, she commits. Boy, do not test me! It is super weird, but then it actually ends up being this like acted out therapy session in role playing form, which is actually a thing, but like definitely not in this scenario, the way that they're doing it. But like, 
it actually like works and helps him realize that he doesn't have to be anything like his dad. It's okay to be himself and it's okay to be proud of who he is and be okay with the way that he is. I'm nothing like you and I don't have to be. Which brings us to our final transition where she wakes up the next morning, deletes all the videos, and they start to go their separate ways. Which is when he realizes that like, he might not actually wanna do this job. You know, he loves the company, but he hates all the people that work at it. What if you took the job? Not me. Basically, in their little chat, she mentioned something called a management buyout, and he basically says that he could do that, but then put her in charge instead. They read books, they hire coaches, all to be exactly like you. That this would basically just be her playing the game she loves so much at this, like, super high stakes all day long with people who suck so she didn't have to feel bad about it. And then he can just be there to supply her with comfort, support, stability, food, all level of basic necessities. What do you call the person that does all those things? A slave. That is the job that I was meant for. And as the romantic music starts to swell and the elevator door opens, she asks, what's he gonna tell his mom about all this? I'd say, this is Rebecca. We're in love. She's in charge now. Because this is a demented rom-com and this is our happy couple finally getting together at the end. God, there's just something about love that does the soul good. You know, maybe we have to check in on that in a few months, but like, they'll keep it interesting at least, and that's, that's half the battle. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, I know this was terrible and she literally like mentally tortured him for hours, but like, I, and I'm, I'm walking away being like, oh my God, it's so cute. <laughs> she really, she really just mentally fucked with him. He was so into it. <laughs> I'm gonna email my therapist. Jokes aside, on top of it being this play on a rom-com, it is largely a movie about being your authentic self, learning to be vulnerable, and not falling into the expectations life may have laid out for you. I think Margaret Qualley and Christopher Abbott both absolutely shine in these roles. Abbott is a consistent film festival favorite for me, and Qualley is just absolutely electric in this with how she had to like shift around from tone to tone. And it's so fun to see all the different little flips in dialogue throughout. Do you, uh, you, you don't want this? Do you want this? It's not broken. No, it's waterproof. You're not as stupid as you look. You don't look it, but you really are so stupid. But yeah, that's Sanctuary, my delightful little off-the-cuff rom-com recommendation of the year. It's definitely not the movie for everyone, uh, but it does actually have very high reviews, both for critics and audiences on Rotten Tomatoes. So I am very proud of this movie. Like maybe that is, is literally just because its intended audiences is, is finding it and other people just aren't, so they're not skewing the reviews, but I, just genuinely believe that this is a near universally loved dommy pervy little movie because it's adorable. But yeah, that was a nice little quick one there for you today because it, it's a very breezy movie too. It's like 88 minutes or something like that. So it's a real easy watch, real fast watch, but I just had such a delightful time with it. I really just love this, this battle of wits. And then when she does actually start just like burying her soul for him and like being honest with him genuinely, she's just messed with him so much at this point that he can't even begin to like believe it or, or trust it or process it in a normal way. I, I think it's so fun. But that is gonna do it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Thanks as always to my Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave a like on the video if you're into that kind of thing. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'm mostly okay. And we'll catch you all later.